going to take place uh, between now and uh, two weeks from today. Uh, Felicia Okweze, I can see you've raised up your hand. Um, uh, Basiru, uh, Felicia, is it a technical problem? Felicia? I noticed you had raised up your hand. Okay, uh, uh, there's no response from there. Uh, so I'm going to try and introduce a, a number of colleagues uh, who, have, uh, uh, who have played and continue to play an important role in the organization of this institute and also uh, to address a number of uh, logistic questions uh, or issues that uh, we need to be aware of. And then secondly, try to map out uh, 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 how this particular gender institute fits in the overall framework of our work at Codestria. Uh, and so uh, I will take roughly one hour to do this, uh, but uh, uh, as you all know, um, um, this gender institute is the first institute that uh, we are holding uh, virtually, uh, not because uh, that was our choice, but because of the current pandemic, uh, which has uh, made us uh, make this major shift to a virtual institute. And um, it's also an institute that brings together uh, the, um, what we had planned to do in 2020. Uh, in 2020, we had uh, planned to hold this institute in June and everything uh, was ready uh, for, for the work that we intended to do uh, until the pandemic uh, forced us to shut up, to shut the council offices closed and uh, figure out uh, a new way. It's taken us more than a year uh, to really get to this end. To be honest with everyone online, uh, we decided to conduct this institute virtually uh, reluctant, uh, reluctantly because we felt that uh, there is something at the pedagogical level uh, that people uh, gain out of a face-to-face -face meeting uh, which is just not possible uh, at the moment. So in this institute for the 2021 edition, we bring it together uh, for the very first time, uh, our intentions for 2020 and our intentions for 2021. And we are hoping that uh, 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 all the limitations considered, that at the end of the day, uh, you will have uh, uh, an interaction that uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is that meets expectations. Uh, we've also done something else which uh, I would like to share with you from the outset. We've uh, admitted into the Institute a number of people who did not apply uh, to, 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 go to, to, to the Institute, but who we felt given the virtual nature of the Institute, that it would be important for us uh, to allow uh, for their participation uh, of uh, people who are interested in the thematic area uh, of uh, violence against women and girls in Africa, civic spaces. Uh, at the technical level, therefore, uh, we have provided specific rights uh, of participation only to the 41 laureates who applied and were competitively selected uh, for the Institute. Um, so, uh, the laureates of the Institute uh, will notice that they have access to almost every uh, 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 access that we can provide uh, to you via Zoom. Uh, those who did not apply to the Institute, but who, however, registered uh, to participate in the Institute, uh, will do more of listening. Uh, and uh, in the event that we get into an interactive session, uh, if they have any questions, if they have any uh, issues they want to, to raise, uh, the, uh, the button for Q&A is provided specifically for that purpose. And uh, my colleague uh, who is in charge, actually my two colleagues who are in charge of managing the system uh, will provide access on a needs-be uh, basis. Uh, 
I am hoping that, uh, uh, again, the limitations of the Institute uh, being conducted virtually for CDAC, uh, that we are going to have uh, a, a very engaging uh, uh, session uh, from today up to Friday next week. And uh, we are going to obviously try to make sure that we benefit out of it to the best possible uh, extent. Uh, having said that, I want to uh, take a few minutes uh, to ask a number of, uh, actually to ask the director of the institute uh, and, um, and uh, the two resource persons for the institute uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, and uh, after they introduce themselves very briefly, uh, I think we, we just need to see uh, their faces and uh, to, uh, to, 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 to know where they are located, uh, given that they could be located anywhere at the moment. Um, after that, I'm going to ask the, uh, the, the head uh, of uh, training program at Codestria to introduce himself. And then I will do a quick appreciation of members of Codestria who I can spot, uh, members of staff of Codestria who I can spot online. And then I will take over again at that point uh, until uh, uh, we close the hour. So I'm trying to locate where uh, I, uh, my colleague Awino. Uh, Awino, I'm going to give you a moment, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Godwin and the team at Codestria uh, for inviting me to be the program director for this Gender Institute. Um, I'm Awino Cage. I'm an associate professor in gender studies at SOAS University of London of Kenyan origin, uh, but working in the UK, having done all of my academic studies uh, on the African continent. So very much rooted on the continent, very much engaged uh, with work and supporting feminist uh, movements um, that are working around broader social justice questions globally, but also specifically the continent. Godin, if you'll allow me, I'll just say a couple of things before we move on to Shireen and Estelle. I think I want to recognize the opportunities that have been provided by uh, COVID-19, surprisingly that I'm calling it an opportunity, which is the fact that for once in the world, we have a, a chance to sort of engage with each other across contexts, uh, irrespective of time zones and physical location. But also one of the things that I want us to hold collectively as we participate in this institute, that openness also produces its own sets of risks. As this uh, is it is focusing on violence against women and girls. It is also anchored within uh, a sort of theoretical or conceptual framework of thinking around questions of closing civic space, uh, which is you know, sort of what we'll be grounding around uh, today and going into tomorrow. So I have a couple of requests that I just want to make up front. I'll make them again when I begin my session. There will be no live tweeting of this. I think that let's honor the space that has been created for dialogue and conversation here internally, we are all present to the conversation and are not tweeting to the world. Let's treat the questions of security as seriously as, as, as those who have experienced forms of influence uh, are needing to think about. I also want to request that please let there be no screenshots or capturing of people's photos uh, or everyone's movements during the event because we want to also take seriously questions of security and consent in the same way you wouldn't want people to take your photo without consent, let's not do so for us. There will be some sessions which will be closed. We will go off in order to have some deeper interactive sessions. And each time we will make you, we will alert you to the moment when we are having closed sessions and give you the timing for when we shall reopen again for the larger group. However, for the laureates, welcome, Karibuni Sana, Bienvenue and I hope that we have a really engaging uh, time over the next two weeks. Asante Sana Gordon. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Awino, and I think uh, I will reiterate that uh, point shortly. Um, uh, can I spot uh, uh, Estelle? Yes, right there, please. Bonjour. Euh, je m'appelle Estelle Kokan, je suis euh, anthropologue, euh, je suis professeur de rang magistral à l'Université catholique d'Afrique centrale, à Yaoundé au Cameroun. 
mes recherches portent euh, sur euh, le genre, euh, sur euh, le politique, les religions, et je suis euh, très contente d'être aujourd'hui avec vous pour que nous puissions discuter pendant ces jours-ci de façon approfondie de la violence faite aux femmes dans un espace civique étriqué. Thank you, Godmin. Uh, thank you very much, Esel. Uh, uh, I'm coming back to you, Sharin, shortly. Uh, Basiru, can you allow Benki Kozimoyo to, to join? Uh, because I would also like to have him introduce himself. Um, uh, Sharin? Uh, sorry, good evening. Thank you. Um, thank you. And um, welcome to everybody. I'm really pleased to be here. My name is Sharin Isof. I serve as the executive director of an organization called Just Associates, which is a feminist movement support organization that works globally. Um, but I am Zimbabwean. I'm from Zimbabwe. I've done extensive work in the Southern African region and the African continent. And I bring those sets of experiences to share um, with you as part of the Institute. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Sharin, uh, for both the director, program director for the Institute and uh, the resource persons uh, on behalf of uh, Codestria. Uh, I want to thank you most sincerely uh, for uh, taking up your time to come and join us uh, for this Institute and for allowing us to draw from your expertise, uh, both in the area uh, of gender, but uh, as I have seen from your CVs, broadly in the area of the social sciences and humanities uh, to draw from your experience, to draw from your expertise and to benefit uh, from you uh, in ways perhaps uh, that would never be possible if we were doing it in another uh, setting. So I want to express my gratitude right from the onset uh, for the work uh, that you have done and the work you continue to do uh, in, in relation to, uh, to pedestrian. Uh, I don't know if uh, Bekimo Kozimoyo has joined us. Um, um, Beki? Um, Basiru, do we have uh, him online? Uh, sorry, could we? Uh, Bekimo Kozimoyo is uh, trying to join and he has not been able to. Uh, uh, please let us reach out to him. Okay. Uh, mean, meantime, I'm going to ask uh, uh, my colleague uh, Ibrahim Oanda to introduce himself. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Oanda. I work for Kodesria. I head the training grants and the fellowships program. I'm actually the person who has been communicating with you more often together with colleagues in the program. And uh, we look forward to having you during this institute. And after so we uh, prepare to uh, process the kind of work that you will be doing in this institute. Thanks and feel welcome. Thanks for doing. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Ibrahim Oanda. Uh, I am very sure that I spotted uh, Ato somewhere. Ato, uh, can you kindly introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Institute. My name is Atua Onuma. I work in the research program at Skodestria. Um, we look, very, look forward very much to this Institute because it's a new experience. And so many of us who are not very directly involved in it will be following it because it will be a good learning experience for all of us. I thank the resource persons and the director for agreeing to share. Um, with all of us. Thank you. And do have a good institute. Thank you very much, Ato. Uh, just uh, for purposes of clarity, uh, Ato uh, uh, is the program head for our research program and uh, Ibrahim Oanda is the program head in charge of the training fellowships and grants program. Uh, and all the institutes uh, are normally uh, 
handled uh, within uh, the training grants and fellowships program. Uh, that explains why uh, at, uh, Oanda is the person you've been interacting with uh, uh, since the planning of the, this institute has taken place. Um, uh, in doing his work, uh, Ibrahim Oanda uh, has uh, worked with uh, uh, my colleague. Uh, at this point, I'm going to just do the introduction of my colleagues in the Secretariat uh, uh, for purposes of uh, checking on time. Uh, Ibrahim Oanda has worked, uh, I think, in preparation for this institute with uh, Emily Jufsa, uh, who I can see is online. And uh, I'm sure most of you have been in touch with Emily over a whole range of things. Uh, Emily is in the training grants and fellowships program. Uh, similarly, uh, you may not have interacted with Dominique uh, Sambo, but uh, she's also in the training grants and fellowships program. Uh, and uh, she uh, supports so Ibrahim Mwanda in a whole range of other programs that are relevant to what we are doing. And I can see that uh, she is online. Uh, I believe that uh, my colleague Dauphin uh, is also online. Uh, Dauphin is also a program uh, manager in the training uh, grants and, uh, and fellowship, uh, fellowships program. Uh, for, for some reason, uh, uh, I know I saw him online, but my system isn't uh, too clear now. Uh, but uh, again, uh, Dauphin does support uh, Ibrahim Oanda in uh, many of the tasks uh, that we are engaged in. And uh, finally, I can see uh, Leonid, uh, Leonid Awa. Uh, yeah, Leonid is there. Um, um, uh, she also supports Oanda more with the higher education uh, programs uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in TGF. Uh, and uh, we are happy to have you. Um, uh, can I see uh, Hadi Jup online? Uh, I don't think I haven't. I don't think I've seen her. But Hadi is new uh, in the council, and uh, she's joined the, the training fellowships uh, program uh, for the same. Uh, you know, to support uh, uh, Ibrahim Oanda on this. Uh, if I am missing out any colleague online, please uh, flag out yourself by. Uh, clicking the button for to raise up your hands, then I will uh, be happy to introduce you. But from my screen, I think those are the colleagues I can see at the moment. And the reason I'm pointing them out is that uh, for the laureates who are participating in the Institute in particular, uh, these are the people that uh, you are going to, to be interacting with, um, uh, especially from the training uh, uh, fellowships and grants program. Uh, and uh, obviously feel free to reach out to them. Uh, I take note of other colleagues in other programs, uh, but who are relevant to the work, uh, to the work that we do. Uh, and uh, I will mention uh, Abdon. Abdon, uh, unfortunately, I can't see you on my screen, uh, but uh, Abdon is a program manager uh, in the research program, and he works very closely with ATO uh, and has been uh, in the council for quite a while. Uh, welcome, uh, Abdon. Um, uh, the final group of people that I would like to introduce uh, uh, is Basiru, Basiru One. Um, Basiru, you need to, to, uh, to, to show us your face for a minute. Uh, uh, that is Basiru. Uh, I don't know if you can all see him. Uh, Basiru is uh, the gentleman who is doing all the technical work, uh, making sure that we can operate with Zoom and all that. And uh, he's going to be of great use to you in the event, in, in the, in the uh, unlikely event that you experience some IT challenges. Uh, Basiru is going to be the gentleman who is going to uh, troubleshoot, at least from the Codestria side, anything that comes up. Uh, that uh, you need to attend to. And I think I saw Alion. Uh, Alion, can I see you? Uh, can you unmute? Yeah, Alion is right here. Uh, Alion works uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Basiru. And uh, I believe that uh, the way in which they have organized it is such that they will be interchanging 
uh, just in case uh, uh, you, you don't find Basiru, uh, Alion will be online uh, to support uh, your work. Uh, so I think that brings an end to colleagues uh, in, the, in the Secretariat who uh, uh, support our work. And uh, I want to very quickly move on and uh, make uh, one or two comments to conclude this introductory session. Uh, in the 2020-2021 Podestria uh, Gender Institute is actually supported largely by Ford Foundation. Uh, and uh, we've been working with the Ford Foundation West African office uh, to process whatever is needed in order to, 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 to make sure that the institute happens. But I'm also aware that in generating the resources that we needed for this particular institute, uh, we had contributions from the Ford Foundation office in South Africa uh, and the Ford Foundation office uh, in East Africa. Um, uh, I am not sure if uh, my colleague from uh, uh, Ford Foundation uh, uh, Lagos is online. Um, uh, I cannot at the moment see him, uh, but uh, uh, we've been generously uh, supported in this particular institute and the, uh, the, the governance institute by the Ford Foundation. Uh, and uh, it's important to mention this because it has serious uh, implications historically and into the future uh, for what we're planning to do at Codestria. Uh, uh, at the point when uh, uh, Nabesaki is online, uh, I, I think that it would be important that uh, we introduce him to the laureates of the Institute uh, because uh, his input in making sure that uh, we do this Institute has been very, very uh, useful. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, if we have somebody from East Africa or South Africa, uh, we definitely are going to, 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 to introduce them. And finally, uh, in, in terms of introductions, uh, I would like uh, to introduce uh, our two interpreters, uh, Lamine uh, and Salio. Uh, Lamine and Salio, I think you can, uh, it would be nice to see whose voices we will be hearing in our background for interpretation. Uh, uh, can I see, uh, I don't know if colleagues can see Lamine and Salio. Uh, yeah, I can see Lamine there. Uh, where is Salio? Uh, I can't see Salio, but I think it's just, uh, I can see him right there. Those, those two gentlemen uh, have served the council, uh, even without a formal contract, uh, for many, many years, I think uh, more than two decades now. And uh, we are happy to have them join us for interpretation uh, for the, the Gender Institute uh, 2021. And so the voices you'll be hearing in the background will definitely be the voices of either uh, uh, Lamin or uh, Salio, and I think they are joining us from somewhere in Dakar, uh, which is uh, where they are currently uh, best. Um, so uh, the laureates for the Institute, unfortunately, uh, we have a total of 41 laureates. Uh, and if we started the introductions, I'm sure that uh, we will not be able to finish uh, within time. Uh, I noticed that I have roughly uh, 38 minutes to conclude this session, and I'm determined to make sure that I conclude this session. Uh, so uh, uh, the program director uh, and the resource persons will make sure that at every point when someone is speaking for the first time, they, that you begin by introducing yourself. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, feel free to send a chat uh, 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 just documenting uh, who you are, where you are joining us from, and what you are working on. And uh, I think that our system will keep a record uh, of your uh, intervention uh, at, at that. So unfortunately, we will not be able to introduce ourselves uh, for the laureates. Uh, but for, for two weeks, I'm sure that uh, you will all have become familiar with each other. And of course, uh, I am uh, hoping that uh, Ibrahim Mwanda and his team will uh, share by email uh, the contact details uh, of all the laureates uh, so that we are in a position to have a record of the group 
as a group. Uh, this year we have, uh, as I said, 41 laureates. Uh, uh, eight of them are from, are from the Eastern East African region. Uh, of course, uh, with the a dominance of Kenyan applicants and therefore Kenyan participants uh, from East Africa. We have a total of nine uh, participants from Southern Africa, uh, predictably with the dominance of Zimbabwe uh, from that particular cohort. Uh, we have a, a total of 11 participants uh, from uh, Central Africa, uh, predictably again with the dominance of Cameroon uh, participants from that particular region. And we have a total of 13 uh, participants from uh, West Africa, uh, predictably uh, with the a dominance of uh, Nigeria uh, from that region, uh, which gives us a, a, a total of uh, 41. Unfortunately, we did not receive any application from North Africa, uh, which is uh, really sad because uh, we've been trying as much as we could uh, to engage uh, with the North African uh, region. Uh, we did not uh, receive any applicants uh, from North Africa. Uh, back to the background to the Institute, uh, as I mentioned that um, this Institute is supported by the Ford Foundation. And for us to get to a point where the Institute was uh, supported to Ford Foundation, we had extended discussions about the possibilities uh, available for us to partner with the Ford Foundation uh, to be able to run this particular Institute. Now, Ford Foundation has an interesting history with Codestria in terms of uh, supporting uh, the institutes. And uh, as I was reviewing my notes and reviewing, reminding myself of how the history of the institutes in Codestria, uh, many people do not know uh, that the very idea of beginning to convene institutes uh, is a particular thing that Codestria pioneered. Uh, as early as 1992, uh, there was, uh, of course, in, 19, in the 90s, the early 90s, there was this general upheaval uh, on the continent with the demands for democratization. And the framing of the developments on the continent at the time uh, tended to make certain uh, almost erroneous assumptions about the unfolding waves of democratization on the continent. In many cases, the framing of the discussion around politics, African politics, uh, the national question and all that tended to be cast uh, within a framework that was extremely neo-patrimonial, making very uh, vain distinctions between the elites and the ordinary citizens and framing it as though uh, there were no intricate linkages that brought uh, citizens, uh, I mean, uh, the ordinary people and uh, elites in the struggles that were unfolding at the time. In, any, in, in fact, at the time, uh, it seemed like this was an unusual development uh, where Africans were beginning to demand uh, 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 certain forms of freedoms that had not been enjoyed for a very long time. Uh, and the assumption was uh, that uh, it was heralding something really new, something very different that had not been experienced before. Uh, at the time, uh, those who uh, held the leadership of the council uh, actually did make very significant uh, uh, arguments, one of which was a critique of the notion of governance and the manner in which it was being deployed uh, to explain what was unfolding on the continent. It is the reason why uh, in 1992, Codestria convened the first Democratic Governance Institute. Um, uh, we tend to abbreviate it simply to Governance Institute, but in fact, the colleagues who did this work and founded the Institute were very aware that uh, the notion of governance, especially as it was understood in the context of the structural adjustment programs, simply as good governance, did not have any powerful explanatory value if it was not located within the democratization uh, process that was unfolding on the continent. And the democratization process was exactly what I'm describing, a process. It was not an event. It was not something for which uh, you would struggle, attain your targets, and then sit pretty and assume that uh, you had already achieved it and that was it. So we framed uh, the Codestria Democratic Governance Institute and convened in 1992 for the very first time. And the Institute has actually, the Governance Institute has run from 19, 
1992, uh, uninterrupted uh, until last year when we were unable to convene for the reasons that we have already uh, explained. At the time when the Institute was being launched, there was a convergence of interest between Podestria on the one hand and the people in the Ford Foundation on the other hand, with particular reference here to uh, our senior colleague and professor Michael Chege, who at the time was working with the Ford Foundation and actually pioneered in supporting Podestria to convene the, 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 the Governance Institute. Since then, Podestria has held different versions of the Governance Institute. And at some point, we also had to begin to ask ourselves the question, is it just governance or are there areas uh, for which we needed uh, intervention in the form of institutes. And indeed, in 1995, uh, Codestria went ahead and started the very first gender institute, uh, convening uh, here in Dhaka in, in, I think, 1995, on the back of a whole range of processes which I will describe uh, very shortly. The important point I want to pick out here is that uh, the council does play a pioneering role in beginning to mount institutes. And secondly, that there was a convergence of interest and support, uh, which brought in the Ford Foundation uh, and for which the support uh, continued until about 10 years ago, when for reasons beyond our control, uh, that was terminated. So by supporting this particular uh, institute, the Gender Institute, and of course the Governance Institute, for which uh, my colleague, uh, Benki Kozimoyo is going to be the director, uh, Ford Foundation, uh, has actually come back to Podestria, and we are really happy uh, for that very fact. Now, uh, the developments in the 1990s were interesting in a number of ways. They were interesting in a number of ways, not just by the coincidence of interests that brought different players together through Podestria, but also because of the convergence of concerns around what was happening on the continent. Uh, you, you, you look at the, uh, at the, 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 the production, especially the publications of the council at the time, and you notice that there was this heavy investment uh, in the theme of uh, uh, democracy and development. In fact, in the early 1990s, uh, there was this huge debate uh, bringing in several academics in the pages of the Codestria Bulletin, uh, brainstorming on this issue of development and democracy. Uh, the 1995 uh, Podestria uh, General Assembly actually focused exclusively on the theme of democracy, and there are a series of publications that have come out of that. But there was an interesting development in 1995 at the Podestria General Assembly, uh, because there was an upheaval that was beginning to take place within the community of scholarship in Podestria. And this upheaval did actually find a space for expression at the, at the 1995 General Assembly. The first part of that uh, was a, a rising desire by younger academics uh, to gain their space and to access their visibility through Podestry. Uh, so at the 1995 General Assembly, there was a protest of sorts uh, by younger academics uh, who were demanding that Podestry should cease to be simply an institute of, I mean, to be a council of institutes. Um, and they demanded that Codestria must become a council with individual membership. Uh, in 1995, there was therefore a, a charter, a change of the Codestria charter. And that change uh, is the first time that uh, the council opened up itself to individual membership. Previously, the council uh, was only a council for, the, for institutes of development across the continent. And uh, that youthful upheaval, uh, 1995, uh, was useful to beginning to open up Codestria uh, in a manner that perhaps had not uh, been experienced before. But that particular development went hand in glove with another development at the 1995 uh, General Assembly. The 1995 General Assembly also was faced with a gender backlash. The demand by a number of academics, mostly women, with the support of a few male colleagues, uh, that Codestria uh, was, was really coming through mainly as a, as a masculine institution. Uh, gender was not uh, even thought of as a useful category of analysis uh, at the time. And so, 
a convergence of interests on the one hand between younger academics wanting space as individual members of Codestria and female academics supported with the female academics uh, led uh, the 1995 General Assembly to open up the council in ways that had not been uh, perhaps anticipated. Uh, colleagues will remember uh, that uh, it was around that time that Codestria then convened a, 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 a conference uh, here in Dhaka uh, whose output is the book that Codestria published uh, titled Engendering Social Sciences in Africa. The conference was obviously an initiative emanating from the struggles that female academics had waged uh, to open up Codestria to a more gendered uh, approach, not just in terms of composition, but also in terms of the intellectual agenda that we were, the council was laying out. So the conference was convened, and uh, if you read the preface to that uh, book, Engendering Social Sciences uh, in Africa, at the opening session of that conference, um, uh, one of my former predecessors, the late Professor Sandika Mkandawe, uh, walked in at the introduction and said he was not convinced that gender was a useful category of analysis and therefore offered himself to sit in the conference and be educated uh, and be convinced uh, as, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the viability of gender as a category of analysis. At the conclusion of that conference, uh, Tandika was uh, given a chance uh, to speak and he rose up and uh, confirmed that the conference had actually convinced him without any doubt that gender was a useful category of analysis. It led to the publication of the book, uh, Engendering uh, Social Sciences in Africa, which is edited jointly by uh, Fatou So, uh, who is a professor of sociology here in Senegal, Amina uh, Mama, uh, who is, a, uh, who is a, a professor of uh, gender studies, uh, and currently the Kwame Nkrumah chair at uh, the University of Ghana, Legon, uh, and of course, uh, uh, um, uh, Aisha Imam, uh, who uh, is a senior academic within the community of Cadestria. The book is a useful resource for anyone who wants to understand uh, the politics of gender studies within Cadestria in particular, but also in terms of opening up the council uh, to more gendered approaches in its work. Since then, uh, the council has uh, tried its best uh, to, be, uh, uh, to, to, to adopt gendered perspectives. Uh, and I think as of now, uh, we make the commitment and we make it without any apologies that uh, embracing gender as an as as important category of analysis and being a lot more inclusive at the level of gender is just but the first step that we needed to make as a council uh, in order to really begin to uh, comprehend the totality of the African experience. Uh, so it was nice that we did Governance Institute. It was nice that we did the Gender Institute. It is nice that we have done uh, you know, uh, the book Engendering Social Sciences and that we have run the Gender Institute uh, since 1995. But I think that's insufficient in terms of addressing the challenge of gender, the challenge of feminism, if you will, uh, in, the, in the work that Codestria does. And so a commitment is made uh, specifically uh, to be able to do even more uh, and in the last four years, we have attempted to do quite a bit. Uh, I think we were able at some point to attain gender parity in the participation uh, of, uh, of women in our meaning-making research initiative. Uh, gender parity uh, that was achieved because we designed specific interventions that were useful in terms of making sure that more and more female academics uh, apply to our programs. And to be sure, when we put up those instruments and try to implement them, it became very clear that the challenge was not the capacities uh, of female academics to competitively gain access to some of our program. The challenge was, uh, was somewhere else because when the applications came in and we did, an, uh, when we did a blind peer review process, it turned out that slightly over 50% of the applicants without imposing any affirmative action um, rules, 50% uh, of the applicants were, were female. And uh, that has given us a, a chance to begin to rethink many of the things that we do, and we continue our commitment in that direction. 
Uh, the conversation around gender is important partly because we've tended to do our analysis based on the assumption that we operate in a gender neutral environment. And yet when you assess many of the interventions we have done, uh, we don't operate in a gender neutral environment. We operate in an environment where the experiences of women and girls, but also the experiences of female academics in particular, uh, uh, all the odds are weighed against them. So the need for us to run away from an assumption of a gender neutral terrain uh, mm -hmm. is something that uh, we are paying specific uh, attention to. Uh, in the context of the work that we are doing in this particular institute, the focus uh, on, uh, on, 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 on the closing civic space is very important. And I think this is where uh, my colleague Awino Ketch uh, was coming from when she mentioned that uh, it is important uh, that we do not uh, uh, abuse uh, the rights of people participating in this institute by tweeting their pictures or tweeting some of the ideas that they are, they are working on. Uh, in the 1990s, there were enormous gains in the democratization processes on the continent. Uh, in many countries across the continent, we were able to begin to enjoy levels of freedom that had not been uh, available uh, to many uh, for a very long time. Uh, we, however, may have celebrated the gains in the opening up of the civic spaces quite uh, early. And perhaps the trends that have emerged in the last 10 years or so are beginning to, to, to fire a warning shot that indeed the democratization process is just what I have mentioned, a process. A process that is open to serious successes, but also backlash. Uh, and we've seen this happening in a number of countries. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, one of the most important studies that Codesia did publish, and uh, I think this book never gets the, uh, the, the, the dimension that it deserves, is a study by, edited by uh, the late uh, Professor Ali Eli Kemps, uh, who was a, an Algerian sociologist uh, forced into exile because of developments in Algeria uh, at the turn of the 1990s. Uh, the book, Algeria, The Challenge of Modernity, was originally published in French and then translated uh, into English. By the time the book was published, almost all the contributors to that volume had died out of the serious breakdown at the level of politics that had occurred in Algeria in the early 1990s. That book drew attention to the deteriorating and fragile relationship between state and society. And for me, it actually marks an instance in the history of Kodesria when intellectual work was able to speak perhaps loudly in relation to a challenge that was, uh, was beginning to develop in society. It was not surprising therefore when quote and quote the Arab Spring uh, begins. And again, Algeria is at the center of the story of the Arab Spring. The collapse of uh, uh, economies in many African countries, the reassertion of authoritarianism in a, a whole range of countries, the civilianization, if you will, of previously military regimes, and the fact that in many African countries, presidents who had reluctantly accepted the multi-party elections and accepted elections as a basis uh, for, 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 for legitimating uh, their politics, were beginning to find very uh, uh, creative ways of defeating the very idea that elections based on a free and fair logic uh, were important in terms of legitimizing uh, political leadership in the eyes of ordinary citizens. And we've continued to witness examples across the continent. Uh, we now have presidents who have gone uh, in power for over 30 years or close to 30 years who have gone through elections and incredibly have been able to win those elections with the margin previously unheard of. This is a worry that we have to confront. And it's a worry we have to confront because of the effects of these developments on civic spaces. And by civic spaces, I understand it to include uh, an arena of civic engagement that allows citizens to contest things that they don't like 
to air their grievances, but also to express themselves in manner perhaps that uh, otherwise would not be possible if they weren't living uh, in democratic uh, contexts. In many countries, again, back to the point our winner is making, in many countries, colleagues, especially in the university, but within civil society, are being trapped and hounded into jail simply because of a thing they said in, an, in, in, in some conference, in some place that they can't even remember. So it's important that we begin to understand the idea of the shrinking civic space uh, in the context in which we are discussing it from that perspective. If the struggle that we have mounted over the years as Africans is to bear any fruits, we have to begin to understand that the democratization process is indeed a process that is subject to numerous reversals and that we are witnesses to some of these developments. Uh, in Egypt, uh, um, in Uganda, it's almost become a ritual in some African countries, for instance, uh, for election periods to be a period where too many things happen that facilitate a further shrinking of civic spaces. And if in the older days, in the days when uh, Peter Eke, for instance, was writing colonialism and the two publics, if in those days, the imagination of a civic space did not include emerging technologies and the capacities that technologies have allowed us to enjoy in relation to freedoms of expression, today uh, we have spaces uh, on social media platforms where uh, citizens are expressing themselves. But these spaces are also susceptible uh, to, 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 to backlash. Uh, we've seen in many countries, whenever there is a crisis, the first thing that is done is to switch off some of these platforms so that uh, you have no access to internet and citizens cannot express themselves in the manner in which they do. But the story that I've told so far is one in which, again, assumes that uh, these spaces and the shrinkage of the civic space is neutral. And it's not. The spaces that are shrinking are not gender neutral, if, 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 if I must be specific. And I think this institute aims to bring this point back home. That if, as Africans, as the generality of Africans, we are experiencing situations where the civic space has shrunk in the last decade or so in ways perhaps that we did not anticipate and that we have waged struggles, first of all, contesting that shrinkage and also trying to draw a boundary beyond which we don't want this shrinkage to continue to happen. As men, that is just by the first level of struggle. And I do not mean to minimize the fact that this shrinkage has really dealt huge blows on the generality of Africans. But I think the experiences of women in particular involves a double shrinkage, partly because of the patriarchal context within which we operate, partly because our imagination of the public sphere is masculine in orientation. And that we tend to make assumptions about the overall effect on people relating to this shrinkage of the, of, of the civic space. But at the end of the day, we don't experience it the same way. And for me, that there are various variables that we need to throw into the discussion for us to be able to fully understand what it means for different constituencies of people, what it means for that space to shrink. The hope, therefore, is that while we appreciate as a conceptual entry point the very fact of the shrinking civic space, we must go the extra mile to begin to comprehend what that means for minorities in society or for people who have been marginalized for reasons other than their gender. And what that means if you deploy not just a gendered perspective in framing the question, but actually a feminist perspective. Because at the end of the day, 
A gendered perspective allows you to see the genderedness of society. A feminist perspective invites you to do something about it, to think beyond simply appreciating the genderedness of this reality. And of course, in different parts of the continent, uh, can I ask everyone to mute their mic, please, because I can hear some noise in the background. Uh, I was saying that in the context that we are talking about, we must also be aware that not only is this invitation from a feminist perspective an invitation to do something about it, to think beyond the fact of genderedness, but also that the experiences of women are not uniform across regions and across generations, which is the reason why in conceptualizing this institute, we didn't want simply to say women, we wanted to say women and girls. Because the experience is obviously not very good, it's actually disturbing to any normal sense, but the experiences differ depending on at which level of life you are. It is worse in some regions compared to others. Religion does play a role in defining the extent to which the shrinking public. Um, can I ask colleagues to mute their mic? Uh, there is some, some noise. Thank you. Um, so we are going to try in this institute to push the boundaries and to do that using violence as an entry point. And yes, the general tendency to think about violence in terms of physical, uh, physical abuse uh, is, is one that we are not going to run away with. But there are now newer forms of violence, some of them psychological, that are useful in terms of understanding the totality of experiences of women and girls in the context of the shrinking space. In fact, there, was, there would have been nothing better than the developments that have happened during the, I mean, sorry, uh, I mean, we are in a position now to understand this reality better than it would have been in the context of the pandemic that we have experienced. Because the cases of violence against women and girls have exploded exponentially. And we need to understand this. We need to make commitments about how to think differently about violence against women and girls and how to think about them in different contexts across the continent. So, so and as an arena of contestation, as an arena of uh, engagement, it is important that this idea of analyzing will provide us with the basis to transcend existing masculine understandings and notions of, of the public sphere and of the, of the civic space. I want to close there and thank you all for listening to me and thank uh, the director again and the resource persons for allowing us to intervene on their time and to re-emphasize that given what we have just talked about, uh, given the increasing fears that we, 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 we know are happening in a number of African countries, it's important that we keep the confidentiality that we, be, we, we need uh, in relation to this. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, uh, to essentially uh, stop there, uh, invite you to enjoy uh, the Institute and to make just but one final point. Uh, given that we are running the Institute, the 2020-2021 Institute virtually, we have taken a decision in, um, in a discussion with the, with the director uh, that uh, we will do our level best to try and make sure that a select number of participants in this particular institute are going to have an opportunity to engage face to face. So really my concluding remarks are to challenge the laureates of the institute. The director of the institute and the resource persons are going to lay out a, a program around which you are going to engage for the next two weeks. Then we will be hoping to get uh, your draft papers uh, within a specified time with the director of the institute will share with you. Both your participation in the institute 
and the quality of the paper that you are going to submit will lead us to select out of the 41 participants that we have, uh, it will lead us to select approximately uh, 10 participants. We're hoping that if the pandemic situation will have improved, we will convene those 10 participants uh, at a meeting, preferably in Dhaka, but if not in a place that would be suitable for a face-to-face -face interaction. And it's out of that face-to-face -face interaction that we plan, we will get papers that we can publish into an edited volume uh, that Codestria uh, is obviously going to make a commitment to publishing in, in due course. Now, previously we have made similar commitments and the laureates have not been able to send us their revised papers on time. So what we've decided to do is that the revised papers will actually be discussed in a face-to-face -face meeting. And out of that face-to-face -face meeting, by the time that meeting is over, we will be sure that we have a manuscript that we can take into the production process. So the challenge to all the laureates of Codestria 2020-2021 Gender Institute is this. Put in your best, share with us your paper on time, put in your best in terms of participation in this institute, and we are going to have at least 10 of you uh, following up uh, with us up to the publication uh, stage. If we get papers, more than 10 papers that are good, and we have more than 10 people who are uh, effectively participating in this unit, we guarantee that we are going to take all of you. But at the time we are working with, with 10, because we have made an analysis and we know uh, that uh, in previous institutes, out of 15 people, we've always been able to raise maybe six or so papers. So the challenge is back to you, and I hope that you are going to have a good engagement in the institute. You are going to have a good time with the resource persons and amongst yourself. If there is anything you want Podestria to assist, please feel free to write to my colleagues, and we will definitely do it in the best possible way that we can. Uh, thank you very much again. Thank you for listening to me, and thank you for applying to the Podestria Gender Institute. We look forward uh, to, uh, uh, to engaging you more and more as days go by. Uh, looking at the program we have today, uh, I take note that uh, it is planned that at exactly 10, I hand over to my colleague, uh, Awino Okech. Uh, so uh, Awino, uh, this is uh, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Godwin, for laying out uh, the contours of uh, the Institute, what motivated uh, Codastria to initiate an institute around the specific thematic area of closing stroke shrinking civic space with a specific focus on violence against women and girls. Um, and that already provides a sort of good foundation for some of the discussions that we're going to be having over the course of today. I want to apologize almost immediately to the attendees that uh, for me, my focus is going to be on the 41. I'm going to pay attention to you and I see your hand and your questions, but I'm going to privilege the engagement with the 41 uh, a, a laureates, 43 or so, 41 or so laureates in, in the main space. So please accept my apologies in advance. So you have all seen the program uh, and I want to request also that we stop the live streaming now so that we are going into a closed session. So you've all seen the program and the program is structured around a grounding session.